to the Honourable Member for Parks. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I rise tonight to speak on the Fair Private Health Insurance Incentives Bill 2011. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'll say from the outset, uh, I'm strongly opposed uh, to this bill. Uh, not only uh, will this bill uh, be detrimental to the people that I represent uh, in the seat of Parks, uh, but it will be de detrimental to the uh, country as a whole and will put enormous stress uh, on the health industry. Uh, in my electorate of Parks, which is, uh, I believe, in the bottom five um, electorates in Australia for per capita income, uh, just on 44,000 people have private health insurance. So the myth that private health insurance uh, is the domain of the, of, of the rich uh, is a falsehood. Private, uh, private health insurance is something that uh, people in my electorate uh, struggle to, uh, to pay the premiums. They sacrifice other things to have the comfort of knowing that when they do need uh, critical health care, uh, that they can actually get the treatment that they want. That, um, in, uh, in my electorate, uh, we're very well serviced by uh, the public system. We have uh, multi-purpose services in the small towns. We have some great hospitals uh, uh, from the Dubbo Base Hospital right through to uh, the smallest MPS. Uh, but there is a, a synergy between the public health system and the private system. And uh, in Dubbo, we have the uh, uh, we have the Lords uh, Private Hospital uh, run by Catholic Healthcare. We also have the, uh, the Dubbo Private Hospital that run in cooperation uh, with the base hospital. And uh, those hospitals uh, allow uh, the uh, specialists, the visiting surgeons and, uh, and specialists to operate uh, in a regional area. So they not only service the the people that live in those towns, but they service people from a long, long way. And uh, it's my concern that, with the uh, with the shrinking of the uh, of the private health system uh, that this bill will undertake, uh, we'll start to see uh, those doctors uh, ceasing to service the re regional areas. And, uh, and many of these uh, hospitals are running on a fine margin. And we've heard other speeches here uh, say that. The percentage of, uh, of operations that are done by private hospitals per uh, uh, dollar uh, government uh, dollars spent on them, compared to the private system, uh, they they are carrying uh, punching well above their weight. And indeed, the uh, the private hospital in the uh, Tamworth, in the seat of New England, uh, which services a a lot of my constituents, it's a, it's a, a regional centre, and uh, and indeed uh, of have uh, been a patient in that hospital myself. It's my understanding that uh, the private hospital Tamara uh, will really struggle uh, to keep its doors open if this legislation comes through. So, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, this bill is is ill-considered for, for for quite a few uh, quite a few reasons, and uh, it, it's. If it's designed to improve the government's bottom line, uh, it, it's incredibly short-sighted because this has the potential to really uh, balloon the, the, the cost, the expenses in healthcare because what's going to happen is that the public system uh, is going to have a huge influx of uh, of people that are, are leaving the private system because they can simply no longer afford it. And while people realise that private health uh, is important and while they sacrifice to keep it, unfortunately when they get into a, a, a bind financially, uh, it's one thing that they, they, they will drop off. It's a, it's a bit like house insurance. Unfortunately when people get into a financial bind, they won't insure their house and sure as eggs, they're the people that are going to get a fire or a flood. And this is exactly the same. These people will uh, uh, reluctantly uh, leave private health insurance uh, and be reliant on the public system. And we're going to see that balloon out. <clears throat> I have some experience in this um, uh, uh, 
One of my daughters is a doctor and has uh, spent quite a bit of time working in a regional base hospital. And already the, the job that those hospitals do uh, uh, through emergency, uh, through outpatients, uh, that already should be taken up by, by, other, by, by other providers uh, is enormous. If, if this influx uh, of people hit this system from the private system, uh, they are just not going to cope. The waiting list now uh, for surgery in many of these uh, uh, regional base hospitals is quite long. And, uh, and so much of, the, uh, much of the elective surgery is done through the private system. If that, um, if that ceases to be an option, uh, the health care for the people that I represent will uh, really, really suffer. And uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, underpinning all of this uh, is a breach of faith. Um, the government, the ministers, the former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd and the former Health Minister Nicola Roxon had said on numerous occasions that this rebate was not to be touched. So, so apart from the practical reasons uh, why this is a dumb idea. Uh, this is a, a dishonest. This is a dishonest move by this government. They uh, they assured the Australian people uh, that they were not going to interfere with the health rebate, uh, and now they're doing it. Uh, if they're doing it to improve their bottom line, because it's my understanding that the money that is uh, saved uh, from these rebates uh, is not guaranteed to go into health care. It, it, it can go into consolidated revenue. If it's to do that, uh, then it's an even dumber idea, because uh, uh, it'll be robbing uh, uh, Peter to pay Paul, and the Australian people are going to end up with a second-rate health system. Now, up until now, uh, our, uh, our public-private system that works so well uh, in harmony uh, certainly, in the in the uh, in the cases that I'm aware of, uh, has been the envy of other countries, and to think that uh, one of the things that this country does well, that this uh, is providing a service uh, from for the, from the from the poorest of people to the to the wealthy people, uh, Australian people get a wonderful a wonderful uh, opportunity to. Uh, to uh, receive health care, this is going to be put at jeopardy. And if this government thinks by pushing everyone to the lowest common denominator, by pushing everyone onto a public system that is already bursting at the seams, if they think this is good health policy or fiscal policy, they are delusional. Now, uh, we've seen uh, since 2007 this government has been talking about reform of health. Uh, but what we've seen is, is window dressing and tinkering around the sides. And one of the great frustrations with health uh, as an MP that I've been dealing with is, has been um, these uh, Medicare locals. Uh, the, the, the merging of divisional practice of uh, di uh, divisions of general practice to form Medicare locals and uh, uh, I've been dealing with health professionals that are struggling to understand where they fit into this grand plan. It, uh, it, is a, it was a, a plan that was uh, announced uh, without any great detail and, uh, and the health professionals in my electorate have been bending over backwards to do what they think the government wants them to do but without any clear guidelines if that's the right thing to do. And so this change on top of the unsettled conditions that's already been created uh, by this government, I believe will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, there is a list of statistics here that I could mention uh, to back up the case as to why this is a very dumb idea, but we've heard that before from, uh, from uh, the eloquent speeches that we've heard in this place, so I will conclude by saying I hope that when this goes to a vote, that the members of this House that represent 
average Australians that rely on being able to access health care in a timely and costly, cost effective manner consider their constituents when they go to vote on this and, uh, and, and, and give this bill uh, the scorn that it deserves.